Hello everyone and welcome back to Jazz Creates. I'm Jasmine and today we are in City Skylines Remastered. We're playing through the Green City's Green Power scenario and so far our city of Green Bluff is beginning to really see some growth. We're still using 100% sustainable energy sources and our citizens are reaping the benefits. They're enjoying lovely parks, an outdoor plaza, pleasant hills, and they can breathe in the nice, fresh air. In this episode, I create an organic, fresh produce shopping district in Dresden Springs, our agricultural town with an emphasis on outdoor spaces. The townies here are looking to bring in a new sustainable living neighborhood, but no decisions have been made just yet. The massive farm has expanded even more with the addition of a lemonade factory and an industrial steel mill. We also work on a brand new temporary university for our residents so they can obtain higher education to start working in offices. Things are looking up here in Green Bluff, so let's see what we can build next. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you all this four-way interchange I created. I used one of Overcharged Egg's videos for inspiration to build this, and I think it turned out pretty well. Mine doesn't look nearly as good as his, but this is definitely one of the best interchanges I've ever created. This interchange cost a lot of money, and I almost ran out because I had the game paused. Thankfully, I remembered that we can't have negative coffers in this scenario, so I unpaused the game and I was able to build my money back up. While I was building that, our town went through a bit of a garbage crisis, so I had to place down some more landfills which haven't contributed too much to our average ground pollution. As you may recall, we have to stay below 15% average ground pollution, and even with these landfills, we're still only at 7%. Additionally, I placed down a geothermal power plant. This is one of my favorite energy sources in the game, especially as a fairly new city with a smaller population. Now, let's get back to building. So since I've um, finished playing, or finished playing, finished uh, creating this interchange, um, I have, I thought there is some space here. I put down some roads to possibly put some things there. I don't know exactly what yet. Um, I was thinking uh, maybe some sort of parks um, because I want, I was looking at um, our, where is the leisure? Oh, here it is. The leisure so over in this corner we need something to go here and i didn't want to um you know delete homes so i think i will put in some sort of park back here um and um let's see what's this one park with birches. Maybe just something like simple like this, I think. Yeah, I think that's, I think that works. And, um, and then do we have room? I was hoping we had room for this tennis court, but I guess we can put it across the way. So just maybe like, like a little sports complex right there. Um, and I guess we can put in a little parking area for it um, so I don't want to put anything on the edge of these of these roads since it's very close to the highway but I just thought it I, I could put something else there I think I'll probably I'm gonna plop down um, some commercial right here and then um, I'm not sure about this row so we do have some um some traffic that's sort of piling up here and i'm not sure the best um the best thing to do for this um i feel like this is usually what i end up doing for <laughs> for 
this starts to my um, my cities um, and it's just it's it's hard to get out of um, but maybe we could change this so that at least these two lanes here aren't turning lanes wonder what would if we change this to a three lane I wonder what that that probably we'll just see what it does it probably isn't gonna do much though okay does that help at all Yeah, and the, but this is one of the things that I it bothers me with the game because um, the cars don't behave like normal cars, <laughs> and so they 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 change lanes. Um, I don't know; they they just don't do exactly what you want them to do. Um, so anyway, so there's that. But yeah, um, I'm going to keep playing and recording and um, yeah, we'll come back to this.
good news. We finally reached our big town milestone at 7,500 population. And with this milestone, we have the ability to purchase a new tile of land. Although it's not shown here, I purchased the fourth tile at the top right, which balances our area into four main quadrants. This area will be used to expand our Briarton neighborhood, and it gives us some extra space on the other side of the highway for new development. Our farm in Dresden Springs is getting bigger by the day, and it's upgraded to level 3, which has given us some new assets. I decide to use all of these assets, and I place down a flour mill, a milking parlor, and a bakery. We also get an industrial steel manufacturing plant, which uses metal to create steel. This is a huge investment for the city, but I think we can swing it. I decided to place the steel mill near the bridge over the river separating our two main areas, Dresden Springs and Briarton. This is a central location between our two major industrial districts and the bridge gives the trucks easier access to the mills, mines and factories for pickup and drop off. Coming up, I'll show you the organic produce shopping area I've started in Dresden Springs so stay tuned. And if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel for more Vanilla City Skylines content. Now, we're going to get back to building. Okay. So um, I was recording and unfortunately the game crashed. <laughs> so I'm going to go over a little bit um, what I did um, that was not in uh, the, that was in the recording that, that crashed. Anyway, so over here um, I implemented a organic and local produce um, uh, policy, district policy. So I made like a tiny little district within our uh, neighborhood of Dresden Springs. So um, it's mainly just this block here that's gonna be the organic and local produce. And I think these buildings are really, really cute. This is this is so cute. I like this little, this one here. Um, and then I added in just another little row of, of homes. We are in need of some more residential. We do have high density available to us and office zones available to us, but um, I haven't put anything in there yet. I also um, placed down this temporary university for, um, for people so that they can uh, you know, get the education they need so that eventually we can phase out all of this dirty industry and create um, an office district. Over here, um, I, I did a little bit of terrain work so that this area could be flattened and we could take advantage of the ore in this section here. We are running out of ore and our factory over here, the industrial steel plant, needs more metals um, which are made using the ore. This is our, is this our metal? Where's our metal plant? Oh, th this is it. Yeah, the ore grinding uh, mill. Um, so I'm going to set this, oops, I'm going to set this on empty. So hopefully that will give us um, some more ore for this. And I'm going to go ahead and place down another ore um, uh, mine. So now I'm going, I'm just going to add in um, some more residential zoning over here, just some low density.
Okay, and then I am going to place down another um, little sports park. I'm just saving the game because that was where <laughs> that was when it crashed after I'd placed down the small uh, football field so okay so our agricultural district is doing is doing well we're at three stars or three levels and um, I do believe that there are a couple of other assets I could place down um, or maybe I already placed them down. The milking parlor, um, cattle shed, we do have that. Let's see. Oh, here we go. The lemonade factory. Um, this requires crops and glass. Okay. And we do have a glass factory. Um, where is our glass factory? I think I think we had placed that over here. Um, here. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let me go back and um, just to kind of be sort of in between these two areas, I'm going to place the lemonade factory over here. Now this does provide some ground pollution. It's really low, so I'm not too worried about that. I do, now that I've placed that down, I do feel like those buildings probably should be closer to the highway, but I do like this spot that's right in between our two industry zones because they're right in the middle. So when trucks are trying to provide resources, they don't have to go all the way around the city in order to get to these two buildings. Um, but, you know, we can reevaluate and just see, uh, you know, if, it, if they all need to be moved at some point. I also uh, implemented um, these one-way roads here. I guess, there you go, you can see the arrows there. Um, we were having a little bit of a pile up over here with a lot of buildings or a lot of trucks trying to get to this small grain silo. So I thought implementing some one way roads would help. And I think that's working out just fine. So it looks like we met our mostly our residential demand. Um, so that is good. I think. I think I would like to put down uh, maybe a library here. Oh, okay. It doesn't fit, which I could get rid of that road on the back. Or I could try to see some if I can place something else down that fits. <laughs> um, We've done a lot in this episode, and I think we've reached a good stopping point. This series is becoming very dear to me, and I'm greatly enjoying this scenario challenge. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.